It's a 52 m 3881 that belonged to my grandpa, and that puts the output from the from the differential like right in line with the pumpkins. That's so uh, sick. So, yeah, so it's <laughs> you got lucky. <laughs> yeah, I got really lucky. Nice. So it's about 18.8 kWh, okay. and he hits the throttle real hard, and it'll pick the front left uh, wheel clear oh, off really? the ground. Like nice. it loves hills. Um, <laughs> Kyle Mazir. Hey everyone, I'm here with Kyle Mazir. How's it going? How's it going, Dale? So, this is a sick build, man. Um, will you take us through it? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a 52 m 3881 that belonged to my grandpa. He gave it to me about seven, eight years ago. Uh, it was kind of real rough. It had been sitting in his yard for a while. And I tore it apart. apart uh, early on, I was going to put a small block Chevy in it. And it sat on a shelf. Um, basically, it, was a, it got stripped down to like a frame and a, and a body. And it was sandblasted. And it was sitting on a shelf for probably four or five years. And I was going to put a small block Chevy in it, and then a, a buddy was joking around, and he was like, uh, you should make it electric. <laughs> so originally, I was going to put like a Borg Warner, like HVH 250 in it. Uh, and then my buddy and my dad were like, you know, this thing, to be fun, it needs 200 horsepower. And okay. so I started looking at like what it would require to, to get 200 horsepower. And really, like on the budget, I kind of had set aside for it. I was kind of thinking like, okay, maybe more of a Tesla. Uh, motor would would meet that requirement and still be something that was both affordable and something I could source pretty quickly so I could start fabricating. Uh, so I ended up going with a Model 3 motor. Uh, originally I was going to try to retain a, a transfer case and stuff, but by the time I had decided to use a, a Tesla motor, um, you know, I started looking at like, well, it's it's a lot easier. You know, there had already been some people online doing putting like a Model S uh, sideways and and driving the rear and front axle with the with the outputs from the from the LDU, um, so I was going to put a LDU in it, yeah. and then um, I called Mike Michael Breen from EV West. I was asking about it because okay. like, I need to put it sideways because my, my diffs are on my passenger side, and I was asking about running the drive unit upside down and, and backwards and stuff like that. And he was like, you know what? There's a right motor out there for every application. Just use it. And he goes, the Model Three motor is the best motor in the world right now. Just use the Model Three. So. So I went ahead and grabbed a Model 3 because it was going to spin the right direction for that orientation. Oh, um, interesting. And it just happened to fit um, like right between the frame rails that the one ear of the motor is like all the way tucked inside the frame rail. And that puts the output from the from the differential like right in line with the pumpkins. That's so uh, sick. So, yeah, so it's, <laughs> you got lucky. <laughs> yeah, I got really lucky. Nice. <laughs> so, it, you know, basically I have the drive unit replacing basically what the transfer case would be in, in a typical Jeep. And it, it's really nice because it reduces your parts count. Like instead of a, a motor and some kind of adapter to your, um, to your, um, def, uh, to your transfer case, um, or maybe if you kept the transmission or something like that, um, basically, you have the drive unit. Um, I have the inverter and everything right in that same unit, and so it's, it's really clean. It's nice. It was easy to source, um, and so so then I, I had already decided at that point I was going to put um, like way beefier axles. Originally, this is a 52 military vehicle, so it had really old style, like kind of weaker axles because it was designed to have like 50 or 70 horsepower or something like that. And so these axles are actually off of a 75, 1975 Jeep Wagoneer, which is like a full-size SUV. Wow. Yeah, that's beefy. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's like 3 8 wall steel tubing on that housing. Like, I had to cut the, the, and I was like, holy cow, like, there's just so much steel here. You keep cutting and cutting. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it took like a serious, like, industrial bandsaw. It was just like, uh, so, so then I had to narrow them, and that also gave me a little bit of latitude since I had to narrow them anyways, of making sure the pumpkin was in line okay. um, where I wanted it. And it took a while to get the um, pinion angle uh, correct and everything so it would handle correctly uh, before I re-welded the ears on. Um, I had also decided um, that I wanted to put bigger springs on. A lot of the Jeep guys were putting uh, YJ, 1993 uh, Jeep YJ springs on yeah. to give you a little bit more stability. The, the CJ5 or the M30A1 uh, leaf springs are narrower and they kind of wobble a little bit on the freeway. And so we went with those springs. Um, so that was the first part of the project was just getting the drive unit in there, getting the axles lined up. Um, I also had to figure out how to um, you know, drive the axles. Um, a lot of the guys that were using the large drive units were using like um, output adapters and they were using some sort of like uh, Porsche style CV um, adapters. Um, I'd reached out to 
a company at the time and I was looking for solutions. And at the time that I was building about two and a half years ago when I first started with this layout, um, I was told um, by some pretty reputable companies that at the time there was no solutions for the Model 3 because the Model 3 housing is very limited on space um, around the output. So I had to kind of conquer that challenge. Uh, I ended up making like custom drive shafts that adapt from like a 1310 style like Spicer drive shaft. Um, so it's got uh, double, it's got double card in uh, CV um, 1310 um, double U joints on the bottom. And then on the top is actually adapted to a, to a tripod CV. So it pops right into the, the Tesla um, output. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so it's actually, um, there's no um, like slip joint or anything like that in the axle. It's, it's just using that tripod. Um, and because of the way I have the springs and stuff, it just worked out that um, the geometry works correctly to where I don't need a lot of axial movement um, because that was one concern because that style, like the tripod CV joint, it only has so much axial movement. Um, but because of the way the springs are, it just happened to uh, the geometry happened to be right, and it works really good. We've had this thing off-roading in, in Moab with a lot of misalignment, and we've had it on the road, and you know, accelerating, rolling, and unrolling and stuff, and um, it's never had a problem, and it, it works really good with vibrations and stuff like that. Sweet. So, Are you gonna take it to KOH in January? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I might need a little more range before I try to conquer K K King of the Hammers. I have the battery in it right now, is, it's a Chevy Volt battery. Okay, So it's only is that here? Or so this is so behind this. This was kind of a, a, a stock, or this was a custom bulkhead that we had to kind of fabricate up to kind of transition between the battery. So the battery is like, um, so that's covering the front of the battery box. Okay. Um, this is, you know, I kept the whole Chevy Volt like T shape. Oh, okay. Um, I had ordered the Chevy Volt. Uh, oh, that's neat. <laughs> yeah. So that's all the original um, box. No I, way. Yeah. This is the box that drops right out of the bottom of the of the Chevy Volt. Uh, Dang. So I had to, this house is an Orion t uh, BMS 2. Okay, so you're using um, Orion. So I had to modify this, uh, I had to build this box a little bit and add it onto here. But this whole box and stuff is the, the factory Chevy Volt battery. That's awesome. Because, <laughs> so I bought the, the Volt battery from a junkyard and I was going to break into modules like a lot of people were doing and put it in the engine compartment. And it showed up to the house and my dad kind of jokingly took it on a measure tape and he goes, he goes, dude, Kyle, this thing will fit like right in here. <laughs> so we had to like kind of massage the fender a little bit. We had to notch it a little bit, and then we had to cut the uh, cut the ears off the box a little bit. Uh, uh, but it fits in there, which I really like because I think from a safety standpoint, it's a pretty good way to go. Yeah. Because it's all the factory housing, you know, the the water lines, even the bulkhead up front that has the precharge, um, you know, precharge circuitry, the contactors, all that is still Chevy Volt. Uh, my water lines that come through that, that cover there are threaded right onto the front of the Chevy Volt bulkhead. The connectors and everything are all Chevy Volt. So it's like you retain your weather like seal and stuff like that because it's, you know, it's got that nice O-ring that goes around the bottom. Um, so That's sweet. I want to talk about the, the cooling there in a second, but first remind me, what was the size of the pack, Chevy it's, Volt pack? It's a, it's a, it's a 2017 Chevy uh, Gen 2. Uh, Volt pack, so it's about 18.8 .8 kWh. Okay. And what sort of range is that giving you? So I think I can do about 40, 50 miles. 40, 50. I, I've driven it to work a couple of times. It's about 10 miles round trip, and I've drained it down pretty low and still gone 20 miles on it. So um, I think I should be able to get around town about 40, 50. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't like to be on like the freeway. The, it, so right now, so the gearing is like crazy on this thing because because yeah. I retain the the nine to one in the drive unit. Uh, I know there's a company that sells like a reduction gear kit, so you could change the, the Tesla gearing to three to one. Right now I have the nine to one in there. Um, and then I had to scour the whole country to get um, lower or higher gears for the for the Dana 44. So I have 2.72 to one gear reduction in the, in the axles, but still my overall drive ratio is like 24 to one. Where a typical, like a Tesla would be like nine to one. Yeah. So it's like crazy gearing, which gives me crazy torque at, at low end, but my top speed right now at 15,000 RPM, I can hit like 56 miles an hour. Okay. So, but the, the car, it, uh, the range really drops pretty fast if you're doing 56, probably because yeah. of the aerodynamics and maybe because the motor's spinning pretty fast too. Um, but perfect for off-roading. 
Yeah. You've got plenty, it, plenty it, of room. If you're doing five, 10 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour off road, like it absolutely loves it. And especially hills, like this thing loves hills. We were, we were my dad and I were driving this one day on, on a hill and my dad was in the past, in the driver's seat and we were, we were kind of testing out a little bit, getting things dialed in a little bit. And he hits the throttle real hard and it'll pick the front left uh, wheel clear oh, off really? the ground. Like nice. it loves hills. Um, <laughs> so it just, yeah, it, it's tons of torque. And it's uh, still, it's like full-time four wheel drive then the way yeah. you have it set up? Yeah. So uh, if you, if you roll under there, you can see that. So the differential on the, on the drive unit right there. Yeah. Uh, so the front and rear drive shaft come right out of the differential. Uh, so yeah, oh, so it's all time all wheel drive. I did buy it from uh, Zero EV in, in London. Uh, I think someone else bought them out now. Uh, Felton, I think, bought them out. But they sell a limited slip differential for the um, Model 3. So I swapped it out for a model uh, limited slip differential. So that helps me with my traction a little bit in there. Um, and then That's the, sick. Yeah, it was pretty fun to take that. You have to take the whole drive unit to, to put the limited slip in. And then on the back, I have an ARB air locker, selectable air locker. So when I'm off-roading or if I'm at the drag strip or something like that, we took this thing out of the drag strip one time. Yeah. You can, um, right on the on the dash here, um, you have this the switches to engage the ARB. And then there's a compressor up there because it's a pneumatic um, actuated ARB air locker. That's this right here. Yeah, a little onboard air compressor. I think in, the in theory you could inflate tires with it, but really it's just there to actuate the... Um, that's very, how did it do at the drag strip? So it did pretty well, I think. I mean, right now the top speed is 56 miles an hour. Okay. I, I think hopefully down the road we can get it to hit 70 because the Model 3 motor is only spinning like 15,000 RPM at 56 miles an hour right now. And I know it'll spin 18,000. So I think maybe we need to just try to work things out a little bit more, but it would hit 56 miles an hour, but it hit it pretty fast. Like it got to a point where it, it was pulling pretty hard and I could feel like it was, it was pretty like it gets your adrenaline going nice so it did like i think high nines in the eighth mile with uh, 56 miles an hour so it was pulling pretty hard like the 330 foot is pretty impressive yeah my brother has a, a 370z and i was comparing our 330 uh 330 foot times and it was just slightly better than like the three three uh the 330 foot times um although uh, the like a something a car like that would pull away by the eighth mile because it goes faster than sure. 56 miles an hour. I love but. that instant torque. Though. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. it's insane. I, I gotta yeah, it, it's um, yeah the early parts of it um, it pulls really hard and I mean it's an old Jeep too so like I'm not sure you want to go too much faster than 56 miles an hour but and on the road too it's or like if you're just driving around and you hit the throttle like it's still like an off road car you know so it's it's sprung like an off road car. Uh, typically, for the show, I took off the sway bar, but typically I run a front sway bar on it. Okay. But even with a front sway bar, like, it'll roll a ton. Um, when you throttle it, um, you know, it, it rolls back a little bit because of acceleration, uh, but it also torque rolls. Uh, and the region's pretty heavy on it, too. So uh, this is the only car I've ever driven that it'll actually... So not only does it torque roll when you're accelerating, but if you let off the throttle too hard and decel, it'll torque roll the That's other the way <laughs> on region. <laughs> uh, That's so awesome. That's pretty fun. Tell me a little bit about uh, about this here, the yeah. Mazir water pump. That's an electric water pump, looks like? Yeah, so this is an electric water pump that, so my, my dad and his two brothers own a company called Mazir Enterprises, and they've been making electric water pumps primarily for, for performance um, internal combustion cars for about 30 years now, almost since 96. Uh, and so this is kind of one of their, their more general purpose pumps that um, I found works really good for my battery, for my, for my um, Volt battery. So this, I actually have two separate loops on this. this we've been working at Mazir Enterprises for a long time with Ron Davis on a lot of the performance like drag race applications. And so for the show, they hooked us up with this, this radiator. So this is actually two radiators in one. They made us a super trick radiator. You can see it's, it's split like right here. Yeah. So this cap actually fills, uh, I think the bottom uh, half of the radiator and this cap fills the top in the radiator. The top half. And you can, so this top half is like a separate loop and this uh, circulates for the battery. And the bottom one has another Mazir water pump. Uh, this is their WP724. Um, and both of these pumps like uh, mount right onto the radiator. So it uh, minimizes how many lines you gotta run. And we're running like all AN style lines on this. Um, in the race car industry, or like in the drag race in industry anyways, like the AN line is like really standard, super clean. It's easy to install, it like minimizes 
uh, your risk of something going wrong and stuff. And so coming from the racing industry, like we, we really wanted to stick with a inline and stuff because that's what we know works really well. Um, so we were able to run super clean lines on the battery loop. There's only two lines because um, there's no line between the radiator and the pump. So, so this is a pump here. A yep. small one. Yep. That's at on the top, yep. the top uh, side, and that which where does this go? So this line goes um, right into this bulkhead for battery. Yep. And then behind that bulkhead is just that that standard factory Chevy Volt um, manifold, and so okay. it threads right onto the front of that. Um, and then the return lines coming off the battery um, and coming up into the return of the top radiator essentially, and then the bottom bottom uh, pump. You know the coolant's coming out of the radiator. Um, and then it's going back uh, to the, you know, it goes to the front of the Model 3 motor. Uh, so the brake. bottom one, which is beefier, is going to the motor. Yep, and it, so it goes first, goes around first to the to the inverter. It's cool okay. in the inverter, and then it has, uh, you know, like the Model 3 comes factory, it has a, a line from the inverter to the front of the motor to, the, to, to that oil to water heat exchanger that comes on the front of the, the Model 3. Um, and so it's pulling the AT up there, and then it's got a, a line that comes back from that oil to water heat exchanger to um, back to the returns back to the to the lower radiator. That's really cool. So I can get to in this like one package. I, I have two separate loops. That way I can set the pressures and flows that I want for that loop. And this one is it's um, this one's one constant speed. Uh, so it's always you know it's, if it's 12 volts on if the pump is on. I always run the battery pump when I'm when I'm driving, um, but this one is, is a two-speed pump. So like on regular daily driving or something like that, I can keep it in the lower speed. It's a little bit quieter, it takes a little less power. Uh, it's a brushless pump, and so then if if I'm in like a more high power or a little bit hotter situation, and the the motor temp rises um, or the water temp rises, um, it can get kicked into a higher speed that, that gives you better performance. That's really cool. I think that um, figuring out how to do an electric water pump is something that all people with conversions have to figure out. This is the first time I've seen a solution like this. That's so, super sick. So I mean, I would like I was raised in like a water pump like factory basically. <laughs> so like if I messed it up, like I was gonna look bad. You know, right. so that was the one thing coming to EVs that we really knew. You know, was yeah. was water pumps. So it's kind of cool because coming to EVs, especially from the gas world. I think everyone kind of has their specialty if they're coming in, especially from the internal combustion world, like sure. whether it's axles or water pumps or even low voltage, like, and all that's applicable. Oh, totally. Um, so that's one thing I love is like you can repurpose those skills and like probably 80% of the build is stuff that's the same as like, you know, like we put a roll cage on it, like there's no difference between no, it. None, uh, none whatsoever. The suspension, even the axles. Um, uh, not really the water pumps, but in some ways the water pumps. Um, it's just a little bit different requirements for for the heat rejection. But the fact that it's uh, that it's already electric, that gets you pretty far down the road. Yeah, so it, to speak. it was kind of a dumb coincidence too, because we were uh, we were kind of known for our electric water pumps in the drag race world. Yeah. In the drag race world, it's used more like because, more because like in the kind of the purpose built drag car, like you're doing a pass at the at the drag race track, then you go back to your pit and it's sitting for like 20 minutes. And so you want to be able to run your water pump uh, between runs. So the electric pumps work really well. Got it. That makes sense. Uh, uh, so it's just kind of, in some ways, dumb luck that we happen to be in that world 30 years ago. And now you can uh, be driving into the uh, to the next cool challenges. <laughs> now, I noticed this. What, is, what does this mean here? Uh, so this is just a contest that's going on. I don't really actually know the results of this contest. I think tomorrow night they'll announce. It, it looks was... like a contender, though. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I see why. <laughs> This thing is cool. Hopefully, I'm a serious contender. It's 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 a. I saw on, on SEMA's website. It's a program they're doing for the first time this year, where where they're having a contest. And I think they were trying to trying to give people an opportunity to kind of highlight aspects of their build that like weren't maybe like the finish or something like that. Uh, so I'm really excited to, for that contest. I think there's a lot of projects that that I think are really cool that maybe aren't like that super shiny like SEMA like kind of stereotypical build. Um, with like shiny wheels and stuff like that, but sure. there might be a lot of work and thought that's gone into the build. So, absolutely. But, All right, Kyle. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so time. much, Daniel. Yeah, oh, it was great talking to you. Likewise.